Hey guys, welcome back to the show. We're back with another developing film video. And as the previous one you've seen, there's going to be a non-stop, no cuts, no edits, straight on from tank with a roll of film, chemistry till the tank being, I mean the film being developed. So, what do we have today? We're going to be developing in D76 from Kodak. Okay guys? So D76 is the one liter that I made last time and I have half a liter left over. It is stock solution, not dissolved in water, only powder and uh, the powder from here and the water. If you want to watch that video, there will be a link up here and below. And uh, we're going to be doing it in stock, which means no more water added to this. Um, then we're going to be developing a roll of Tri-X from Kodak, uh, which thank you to Kodak for sending me the Tri-X and the D76 to do this video. And we're going to be developing it in uh, stock, so that is eight minutes. If you're wondering about how long, how many times, or how much time, or whatever, there's the massive dev chart, but I like, and I printed, the Kodak instructions. So this is the PDF that I printed, and we're going to be doing full strength, like it says here, and we're going to be doing um, Tri-X in a small tank, it's important, and it says 8 minutes. And down here it says, with agitations at 30 second intervals. So when the clock is going those 8 minutes, every 30 seconds, I will agitate probably like five times and put it down. So it's almost constant agitation. It'll probably be a little grainy, but this is what it says from Codex, so we're gonna be doing that. I left the link below for the PDF instructions, which are very important. So let's start. All our chemistry is at 20 degrees. Uh, once again, if you wanna see the videos on how to load the reels, how to mix the chemistry, there'll be links below and up here for everything. So this is just developing with Nico. So let's start. So eight minutes. We're gonna put the timer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have our D76 here, which is half a liter, I don't have to measure that. We can take off the plastic cap. This is a Jobo 1510 tank, or 1520, sorry. And then this is at 20 degrees. So we're gonna pour it, and when we pour it, we'll start. Turn it on, put the lid on, and the first time we're going to do one whole minute. So the whole minute we're rotating. This is inversion, it's a small tank, so it says every uh, 30 seconds. So the first minute we keep on agitating by inverting and rotating, you can see my hands, for a whole minute. And when we finish, we knock on the table to remove those bubbles. As I said, this is a Tri-X 400 ISO, shot at 400 ISO with a Pentax 645, and uh, no pushing, no pulling, just 400. So we go all the way to a minute. There's no rush here. You kind of have to count like one, two, you know, just keep on going slowly. And when it goes through that zero, we'll put it down, give it a couple bumps. That removes the bubbles that go up and your film is covered by chemistry which now is developing slowly. We can put the cap on on the D76. We're not going to be reusing this D76 so we're going to be dumping it uh, in a bucket that I have down here. So now we're going to go and when it hits 30 seconds I'm going to give it a couple agitations. I'm not going to do too many because if not I'll go all the way to the 30 seconds again. So we go one, two, three, four, five. And we wait a little bit. And just keep on If you don't. So, sorry, I needed the bucket. I forgot to get the bucket. So, now when it hits 30 seconds, we're going to be doing another couple inversions. That all the way. Um, now we go one, two, three, four, five, knock, and after that, when we get to 30 seconds more, we'll do it again. This is all eight minutes. This is the most uh, complicated part. Sorry, forgot the bucket, guys. This is what happens when you do an almost live video. So let's put the bucket. Actually, I'm going to put it on this side. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five. So we have our bucket here. 
and uh, we'll dispose of them. You could reuse D76 if it's uh, in stock solution a couple times. I usually like consistency, so I don't reuse chemistry. It's always a one-stop go, and I'm doing uh, stock solution because then I'll be doing one, one videos and one, two videos. So we once again have to mix. Keep on going, keep on going. So we're using uh, D76 D in one liter. I had the video how to mix that one liter, and I'm going to be doing a video on how to mix the gallon. A lot of people are concerned that the gallon you can maybe mix parts of the chemistry uh, of the powder into one liter and so on by uh, weighing the, the, the powder. It's not recommended, so I'll be showing you guys how to store it and all those little tips and tricks in a future video. So, one thing that's very important, when you do print the instructions in a PDF, there's information about what happens if your negatives are thin, if your negatives are too contrasty, what time, if you're using sheets, if you're using uh, big tanks, small tanks, rotati, uh, rotation, developing, and whatnot. So I highly recommend you check them out, you read them. There's more information there than in most forums. Two, three, four, five. And at the end of the day, Kodak didn't make this for people to follow. So yeah, <clears throat> D76. One important thing about D76, if you don't know, is basically almost every other developer in the market compares itself to D76. So when they come out with a new developer, they usually say, does it have more grain, does it look sharper, uh, and so on, compared to D76. So it's very much a standard. One, two, three, four, five. So eight minutes. As I told you, this is the most critical part. After that, it's stopped. Once we've stopped, it's not so critical in temperature or time. Uh, we'll be stopping for a minute, and then we'll be fixing for around four to five minutes. And this not being a tea grain film, it's not a big issue to stop for the normal time and not go extra, which you do for tabular grain films. Three, four, five. As I said in the previous video, if you want to see it, it's TMAX 100 with D76 stock. Is If you guys have any questions on specific developers, specific films and procedures or tanks or rotating tanks, Jobo, stuff like that, let me know and I'll be happy to make a video like this one with such chemistry films and uh, methods. And now we go again. Only a couple more minutes, guys. And this whole video series is for you guys to follow along how I do things and show you that it doesn't require a lot of equipment. Um, I could do it in my darkroom, I have a full-time darkroom, but I'm doing it in my open studio, as you can see, with a Stenobaker camera and everything around me, just to show you that you don't need much more than a tabletop and chemistry and a little stopwatch. And then we go for the next one. One, two, three, four, five. One thing that's important, a lot of people download the Massive Def Chart app, which is around $7 to $10. I'm not sure right now there's for iPhone and Android. Um, and the thing is, you don't need it. It has a free website where you can check all the developing times and films and combinations. And then you, all you need is a timer. You can use a Gralab like mine, or you can use a three-stop uh, timer, anything, a Patterson one. Uh, your phone, a triple timer, and it can be light, as you can see. There's plenty of light in the studio. You don't need that with a daylight tank. So save yourself six, seven dollars. I mean, the app is pretty nice, but you can save yourself six, seven dollars and buy a couple of rolls of film and keep on shooting. Um, so we're going to start the last minute. So about to hit minute one. And the Grab Lab will buzz pretty loudly, which is good for me that I get sometimes a little confused, especially while recording. So yeah, guys, D76 is a very simple developer. Uh, you can make it out of your own powder. I've done it myself. I buy the commercial version right now because it's just easier and you can prepare it and just develop. Um, but yeah, it's really simple. And then we go. This is going to be your last one. Two, three, four, five. And we're going to start opening our stock, which is here. 
and then we're going to take off the lid. We empty it out, eight minutes, and then we do our half a liter. I'm not going to measure it either because I'm not so concerned that it's exactly half a liter or a little bit more. I'll see it in the tank. So this now goes into the bucket. As fast as you can. Every little second counts. And someone asked me on the previous video the other day, um, why less than five minutes is not advisable. And um, let's do one minute, continuous. So when you're developing for less than five minutes, it's not recommended mostly because you can have inconsistencies. So if you just did what I did, and instead of taking five seconds, you take 20 seconds in an eight minute developing time, it won't be so critical or so much of the time percently or you know percentage uh, compared to a four minute or a three minute. So if you're developing and you're looking at your times and you get a time that's three minutes or four minutes, just try to not do that and develop it a little bit more um, diluted and go for a little longer time. This is eight minutes, so that 10 second, 15 second time is very, very small amount of you know issues. Uh, and that happens from consistency from one roll to another. So if today I was doing three minutes and tomorrow I took a little bit longer, it was 315, that would be a massive difference because it's such a big percentage. So now, turn it off. We can pour it back in because stop bath you can reuse quite a lot. And this is the stop bath by, uh, stop bath by Kodak, which I mixed and, oop, that's not the lid for that. So we close it, and now we're going to go for the auto fix, which is the fixer. So now we pour this in. There's half a liter. This is usually around five minutes, so we're going to do five minutes this time. Pour it in. And this, as I told you, you're not so critical. Your film's being developed. It's being stopped. Now you can, you know, scratch your nose if you need to, whatever you have to do. You can take a little bit. It's not critical. Put the lid back on. Turn it on. And we go. And this is almost like the film. First minute, the whole time, and then every 30 seconds, like every minute, you can do inversions. I usually develop by every minute doing five inversions, but as it said in small tanks, every 30, we did every 30. I'm going to follow the rules at least, you know, one time. And I think for new newbies and beginners, it's important to follow the rules. Then you can, you know, change your methods to something different if you want more contrast, more grain, or whatever you're looking for. So, what I was telling you guys about D76, um, it's a pretty low contrast developer, so if you're developing D76 um, with the D76 chemistry, and your negatives are a little thin, it's very normal. Uh, I actually moved on to HC110 because it has a bit more contrast than when I'm printing in the darkroom, it's exactly the look I was looking for. With D76 it was great, I was getting very nice thin negatives, but at the same time, I had to do a lot of dodge and burning and adding contrast in my enlarger. It's always easier to add contrast than to remove it because if I was doing HC 110 and I was getting super contrasty film, it's not usually the best thing. So it's good to know what developers will do what for the final print. So if you shot something in super high contrast and you just want to lower that contrast, you can use D76 and you'll be much better with those negatives. If you're trying to get you know, a little bit of contrast out of a very dull day, one of those gray sky days where nothing's really popping, then you can use HC 110 and maybe agitate a little stronger, or give it a bit more grain, you know? And I highly recommend the Top Shit uh, uh, channel. He's got videos where he agitates really strongly and he explains that that is exactly the reason. He wants more grain, he wants more contrast. So, but first we're gonna just stay with the, what it says on the paper. So, one minute. And we do five, one, two, three, four, and five. And that's what this series is all about, teaching you guys how to do it. And then maybe we'll start going, you know, a little bit onto, I want more grain, I want more contrast, I want less grain, or I want less contrast, or I metered wrong, all of that kind of stuff you'll see. You can see the fixtures drying on my gloves, it's getting all white. That's why you got to wear gloves, guys. So a couple more minutes and then we're going to be washing. We're going to be washing with the Ilford wash which is fill it up, 10 inversions, dispose, fill it up, 
20 dispose, fill it up 40 dispose, fill it up, you know, 100 dispose, and then should supposedly it be clean. I like using the force water with a little hose, but as we're live from no dark room and no water, uh, we can't do that. Also, it saves a little bit of water. So, another minute, two more minutes, guys. And this whole idea is that you guys go ahead and do it with me, like a follow along kind of cooking show. So, there we go. We're going to have two more minutes. <clears throat> But yeah, any questions you guys have, issues you have developing, anything like that, just free, feel free to leave a comment. Um, also, if you decide that you want to support a channel like this one and this kind of content, which is not made for the millions of views, I have a Patreon page, which really helps, you know, buy some stuff that I need, keep up with digital content and cameras and all that. And at this time, I have to say thank you, as I said, to Kodak, who sent me the D76 and the Triax and the Stop Bath. Uh, to make these videos, so thank you Kodak uh, for doing that. You can, guys can also thank Kodak for investing on a YouTuber like me. So our last minute, we're going to do five more and then we're going to be dumping and start washing. And last thing will be the photo flow which is behind here. So we go one, two, three, four, five. One thing is, is that fixer is getting on my gloves. Uh, I highly recommend you wash them before you do any squeegee or anything with your film because this is just fixer and if we're washing to remove the fixer this would be adding it on top so when we finish I'll be probably just hanging it out and showing you guys and then I'll wash my gloves and squeegee it with my gloves and that's going to be the last minute I should have just some faucet here but you should be doing this in a bathroom or in a kitchen or in a dark room uh, 15 more seconds. Um, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, one little trick when you're going to hang your film is put on the shower on heat and that steam will make the dust settle and that way you won't get any dust on your film when it dries, which is not the best moment. So this will buzz. Weed. You want to dispose your fixture the right way. I'm going to put it here and then I dispose it properly. Also, fixer you can reuse if you need to. This one was used a couple times. And now we're going to go with the water. So we have uh, a 1,000 milliliters here. We're going to wash by the Ilford method, so no timer. So we're just going to be pouring half a liter of water, a little bit more. As I said, this is not the most critical part. So guys, don't be so stressed. You can calm down. You can let go after doing that, developing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. As the Ilford method says, ten, dispose, fill again. So fill again, another half a liter. This tank uses half a liter. That's important to know. You want to always use the amount of chemistry or liquid that you need for your tank depending on how you're using it. And I'll show you now. So 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I can count guys. 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So as you can see here, it says how much rotation, how much uh, inversion. So it says 485 milliliters. I do half a liter. Always go a little higher, just in case if not, you'll get like foam on the edge of your film. And this time we're developing 120 film and it really is pretty stinky to get that uh, border for the bubbles. So now we're going with this water. Water has to be approximately in the ballpark of what you need to develop. So it's 20 degrees Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit. Keep it there. And now I'm going to just do like a minute because I can't count to 40 on camera and still talk about something interesting. So yeah guys, 500 milliliters. On the Patterson tank it says it on the bottom so you've got to read it there. But most daylight tanks are usually half a liter. Uh, I use the 25, uh, the 1,500, uh, 1,520 tank here. 
but if you're using the 2500 series of uh, Jobo, which has a larger diameter, it's like a liter and a half almost, so that's why I use this one. You want to use a smaller tank to keep chemistry, you know, as low as possible, but still developing properly. So we'll do the whole minute. I guess I can do around 40 inversions in a minute. And then we're going to dispose, and we could go straight to the photo flow. I'm going to wash it a little bit more. But if you guys are at home, after doing this, you can always just grab the water faucet and throw some water around 20 degrees. You don't want to go, you don't want to go way too cold or way too hot or way too fast from hot to cold. So that's the 40 approximately, and we'll do another one just in case. Just fill it up with water. There we go. And now we do another minute. Oh. But yeah, <coughs> like I was saying, basically just keep on, just wash it more if it's necessary. Don't be scared to wash too long. Don't leave it for a night, but you can leave it, you know, for 10 minutes. It won't do any harm to the film unless it's really hot or really cold. If you get reticulation, which are like little worms on your film, it means you did that. You basically expanded the gelatin and then compressed it, or I don't know how you say that in English right now, but you basically change the temperature a lot, the film reticulates and does like little worms on your film. So if you ever get that effect non-purposely, that's why. So let's keep on going, and after this I'm just going to add the photo flow. Photo flow is 1 to 100 uh, dilution which means one part photo flow, 200 parts water, uh, which is going to be just like a milliliter on this. So that we can turn off now. Dump it. And we're going to grab our photo flow, which was holding the D76. And you have the instructions, but it says 1, 200, so basically that. So you get a syringe or something like it, and you go and grab some chemistry. So there we go, one milliliter for half a liter. So basically I can pour that down and now we can just basically pour water. What Photoflow does is a, basically a washing agent, not a washing, yeah, I guess it's called a wet, wetting agent, which breaks the water tension on the film so the film doesn't have those drying marks. If you're getting drying marks, even with PhotoFlow, I highly suggest you use distilled water. I don't have that issue at my, you know, where I live. So now we're going to do a minute of PhotoFlow. And I kind of give it a bit of a spin to mix it. But then you can just leave it there because it creates a bunch of foam. As you can see, there's foam everywhere on the lid and stuff. So you just give it a minute there. Then you can pour it down and your film would be developed, washed, and... Uh, photo flow applied, so basically with a wetting agent. Um, as I said, my hands are kind of full of fixer, so let me pour some water over my hands. So they're sort of clean. And that way I can show you guys the film when it's finished. You want to clean your gloves, guys. So I don't have a timer, but it should be a minute. Forgot to turn that on. Um, so we dispose this. It's approximately a minute, guys. It can be a minute, a minute, and a little bit. And now we can open our tank. We could have opened it after the stop. No, sorry, after the fixer. But I like opening it at the very end. Kind of keeps the surprise. So our roll is here, as you can see. And now I'm going to push it out. And there we go. Kodak Tri-X on a 6x4.5. And if you see more pictures than you think there are, it's true, because I use the 220 back and it gives me 17 exposures almost, which is kind of amazing on a roll of 120. So yeah guys, this is how you develop Kodak Tri-X in D76 at stock delusion. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned, any question, comment, or thing you want to request, or whatever you want, just leave a comment below and I'll be happy to entertain it. And uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. And thanks Kodak for sending this. Bye guys.